God bless you for joining in tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we ask you to take swift wing with the Holy Spirit and minister to us. Give us enlightenment and understanding, we pray. Grow us in the name of Jesus in the things of God. Amen and amen. I want to speak to you tonight on warring God's way. Warring God's way. You know, Paul said, our weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They're not physical, they're spiritual. And I've always told people, the more spiritual you can be, the more peace you're going to have. You have a problem in your life, let's say, and you, you, you don't know what to do about it. You don't know how to tackle it. You need to pray about it. Spend some dedicated time praying about it. Spend, spend some days or some weeks just praying about that. Ask God to speak to you and show you. Because if you're spiritually minded, you have life and peace. You have carnal mind, you have death. So our flesh is no good when it comes to the things that really matter, the things of God, the things of eternity, the things that change people. If you look at things on the surface, you're looking at them through your five senses. But if you look at things underground, where the roots are, you're looking at them spiritually. And where the roots are is what's giving life to that which is above the ground. So we look underground. We go underground. We go into the spirit. Uh, and we understand all things. He that is spiritual understands these things. And so we want to talk about the warfare that God wants us to have, which is not, it is not, it is contrary to the natural man's mind, his thinking, what he wants, what he chooses. It is not the way you would think. <laughs> Very little about God falls in line with our natural thinking. He, uh, he has his own understanding about what should be and what really works. And so 2 Chronicles 20, 20. So it says, They rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. So you say, well, what has this got to do with warring God's way? Because it's, it's the inspired answer of a king who had gotten all the people to go into prayer and to fast. And this was the first utterance. They faced three different nations that had come against them. A coalition of armies had come, Mount Seir and and Ammon and Moab had all come against them and outnumbered them many times over. And so in the natural, Jehoshaphat knew with Judah that he had no chance in the natural to fight the battle. You know, it's, it's interesting. God, until he gets us in a place where we have no chance except him, we usually don't consult him. We usually go on our own strength, our own presence, our own power. But if you... Let God take you to the place he wants to. He'll put you in situations that are way bigger than you are. And you'll say, my goodness, what in the world am I facing? Well, I'm going to look to God. So warring God's ways. I, I've always thought of this in terms of vision. Second Chronicles 20.20. 20. What is it to have perfect vision? It's 20.20. 20. 
What is it that the optician wants to get your eyes to go to 2020? Why do we wear corrective lenses to get to 2020? Perfect vision. And so if you just apply that numerology to this verse, it's amazing. And I don't think it was put there by accident. I believe verse 20, 20, 20, chapter 20, verse 20, is there on the design of the Holy Spirit. He's given a little extra nudge to say, hey, pay attention to this verse. It's key. It's life-changing. And what is it? Hear me, O Judah and Jerusalem. It's the Holy Spirit saying, hear me. Put your name in there. Hear me. He's saying, hear me. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Believe in the Lord your God. That's the difference in heaven and hell, light and darkness, good and bad, is that we are called believers. That's who we are. That's how we're identified is by our believing. That's what we're called. We are believers in the gospel and the Lord Jesus. And so he said, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. So all of this warring that I'm talking about is predicated on not your understanding, not your belief, not your intelligence, but in your letting go of all of that and believing what God has said. Hallelujah. So what do we find? We find that there is instructions here on how to war God's way. First of all, in verse 12, praise the Lord. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. What is that? Before, Jehos, before, before the king gives directions and instructions to the people of Judah, he first prays a prayer and he makes a confession. This is what helps us to understand we need God. What do we do? We got a trouble. God, I confess that my flesh is worthless. I confess this is above my pay grade. This is above my intelligence. I confess I have no power. He said we have no power against this great multitude. Nor do we know what to do. But one thing, our eyes are on you. Praise the Lord. Our eyes are on you. We're looking to you. That's the first step from warring God's way. Believe and then to make your confession. Believe, then make your confession. Believe, make your confession. Now you're getting 20-20 vision. You're starting to see right. What did Elisha say to the Lord? Open the eyes of Gehazi, the servant, so that he can see. And he said, oh, the mountains are full of the chariots of the Lord. They that are with us are more than they that be against us. When the Syrian army was arrayed against them, God needs to open our eyes to the real battle, to the real understanding. Then what's next? Verse 15. In verse 15, we get an admonition. Listen, all of you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. And you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. So now finally we get a response. We've had believing, we've had confession. Now here's a man that speaks under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and they get a response from heaven. And what is that response? This great multitude that's come against you, the battle is not yours, but God's. Wow. <laughs> you think that doesn't take a load off? You think that doesn't release you for joy and faith? In the middle of the trial, before the answers come, you can shout for joy. This is not my battle. This is God's battle. Oh, that's so good. And then we go to verse 17. What is the next step in this? You sh specific instructions. So before it, we get uh, an admonition from the Holy Spirit to understand 
The battle is not ours, but God's. And then 17, there is still something for them to do. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. They still had something to do. Go out against them. We still got to stand against the devil. We still got to speak the word of God over our situation. We have to go up against it. We have to look the devil right in the eye and say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. This is so anointed. I feel the Holy Ghost on this. This is helping somebody. You're in a battle. You're in a tailspin. You're in confusion. You're in discouragement. You don't know what to do. Well, I've tried to pray, but I don't feel anything. Hey, follow this pattern right here. Hear these words right here. This is God speaking directly to you for your battle. Nothing's bigger than God. I don't care how hopeless it looks. Go out against them. Stand up to it. Speak to it. Speak against it. And then verse 19. The Levites, the children of the Kohites, the children of the Korites stood up against the, uh, to praise the Lord of Israel with voices loud and high. They stood up to praise the Lord with voices loud and high. Now, he said it's not your battle, but there's still a part for you to play. Go up with voices loud and high. I believe that. I believe our confession is our victory. I believe we've got to say it and speak it and believe it. We have to believe. What's the first thing in this warring God's way? Believe in the Lord your God and you shall you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And then what's the last one? Levites, the children of the Kohites, stand up and praise the Lord. And they said they stood up with voices loud and high. I love that. Loud and high. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been in battles before where I felt like I was going under. And I'll tell you, I've got praise music turned it up so loud it rattled the windows and I played it and put my hands up and started worshiping God and the Holy Ghost came down. You try that and see if it won't change. Your environment, the atmosphere, your spirit, your heart, you have the victory, you just got to do these steps. It's not for you to reason, not for you to make phone calls, not for you to try to change them, not for you to try to talk them out of it, not for you to try to fix it. It's for you to praise God because he said, the battle's mine. I'll fight it. I'll give you the victory. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, help us, God. And there are specific people that are watching this that need this lesson. I pray that you'll minister to them and you'll give them the courage to follow these four steps. In your mighty name, they will be victorious. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you so much. Praise the Lord.